السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, all his companions, may Allah bless them all and may Allah bless every single one of us and grant us all goodness. Brothers and sisters, this evening we are going to go through the names of two of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Both of them had memorized many of the hadith or the statements of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first one we will be speaking about was the one who has memorized the most of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is no dispute in this regard. I'm sure many of us have heard when we listen to the hadith. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ It is narrated by Abu Hurairah رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ May Allah be pleased with him that he heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say. And then we've heard so many different versions and words and so many different ahadith. This man was a powerful, powerful individual in memory. And he was a very humble person. So let us learn more about who is Abu Huraira. Remember, radiyallahu anhu means may Allah be pleased with him. So it is actually a dua. So we could comfortably say that he is a person whom we pray for the most. Because so many times we say Abu Huraira radiyallahu an, and we don't even realize that we've actually made such a powerful prayer for him. May Allah be pleased with him, with them all and with us as well. I mean, his name was Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. It is reported that he, before Islam, was called Abdul Shams, the worshipper of the sun. So when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa met him, he said, Anta Abdul Rahman, you are the worshipper of Ar Rahman. And from that day, obviously, he was known as Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. So where did he get the name Abu Huraira from? When he was young, he had a little kitten that he used to play with. And he was very attached to this kitten. So his friends used to call him owner of the kitten or Abu Huraira in other words. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on at some stage called him Abu Hir because Hir is a bigger cat, so to speak. And Huraira is a little small kitten. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. This was a pen name. And I hope that when we have pen names for each other, we have good names, not name like fatty and so on, which are actually quite disgusting. If you were to ask me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Sometimes we choose names for our friends that are actually raw when it comes to meaning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to choose the best of names uh, if we were to choose nicknames. Remember, a nickname is not prohibited on condition that the person you are calling likes the name. If they don't like the name, it is totally prohibited and it can become a major sin. May Allah protect us. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, there was a leader of his clan or his tribe, one of the leaders of his tribe, a Dawus. He came from the Dawsi clan. One of the leaders, his name was At-Tufail ibn Amr. At-Tufail ibn Amr, he came to Mecca at one stage and the people of Quraysh told him in the early days of Islam that don't listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he's a magician. And the minute you hear him, he will have an impact on your heart and you will start creating problems for your family and there's going to be big dispute and so on. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was busy in uh, Makkah tul Mukarramah reading Salah and this man had put cotton wool in his ears because he was so conned about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a magician. At-Tufail ibn Amr says, I put cotton wool in my ears. And then when I was near the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the Kaaba, he says, I heard this Quran being read by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I went close and it was so sweet, so powerful, so full of meaning, so correct, so accurate that I went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, do you know what? What is it that you have brought? So he spoke to me for a little while and immediately I told him, I bear witness what you've come with is the truth. This is really the truth. So he accepted Islam and he went back to his people of Dos and he started calling them towards Islam. It is reported that initially very few people accepted Islam, two members of his family and this young man, Abu Huraira, radiyallahu anhu. 
He was a young man and he had accepted Islam at the hands of At-Tufayl ibn Amr al-Dawsi radiyallahu an. And later on, just after the battle of Khaybar, At-Tufayl ibn Amr came to Medina Munawwara and with him was Abu Huraira radiyallahu an and a few others. So he had come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu had come just after this battle of Khaybar. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu sat with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and did not miss anything from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time he heard something, he would memorize it. And he was a poor man. He had no family. He had no wealth. So much so that he says one of the miracles of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, I was so hungry that I once was wishing for some food and I saw Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. I asked him a question hoping that perhaps he might say come home, but he didn't say come home. And I asked Umar ibn al-Khattab a question when he passed, hoping that he might say come home, but he did not say come home. And I saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he told me come home, subhanallah. So when I went to his house and I entered the home, I saw a little bit of milk there. And I was hoping that he would tell me drink some of this milk. But he told me, he asked his family, where did the milk come from? So they answered him. So he says, Oh, Abu Huraira, go and call the people of Sufa. Now the people of Sufa were the poor from amongst the Sahaba. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, as much as I wanted the milk, I had to obey the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I went out and I called the people of Sufa. They came and each one of them drank from that little pot. And they all had drank from the milk. And I was hoping that now the milk would come to me. But when they were finished, it went back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he looked at me then and he says, Oh Abu Huraira, you haven't drank from this milk. He says, no, I haven't. He says, drink from it. So I drank a bit. He says, drink more. I drank more. He says, drink as much as you want. He says, I drank to my full until when he told me drink. I said, there is now no place here. Then he said, okay, now you can give it to me. And that is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drank a bit. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, this was a miracle because the milk was very little. And look how all of us were quenched just by that milk, subhanallah. This was Abu Huraira, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and be pleased with every single one of us. So he says that once at tufayl ibn Amr told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want you to pray against my people because I called them to Islam and they kept harming, they kept disagreeing. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he could say anything, Abu Huraira says, oh, that's the end of those. Because he knew once Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes a prayer against those, the people of those, it's the end of them. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not make a dua or supplicate against them. Rather, he said, Allahumma hdi dawsa. Oh Allah, guide those. And believe me, there came a time when they all accepted Islam. But this was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the one who did not make dua against people, rather for people. And I'm sure we know of the story of Ta'if when he made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the children at least of the people of Ta'if. So here we have Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, one of the ulama of the Sahaba. Although he only met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, three to four years before the passing away of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Let's say approximately four years. In four years, he learned so much and he memorized so much. He says the only person who could compete with me in memorization of the hadith was Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. And the reason is he could write and I don't write. I had to memorize. That was the reason. So people asked him, Oh Abu Huraira, how come you have memorized so much and you have only met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a few years, whereas there were others who were there for years on end and they have not memorized as much as you have. He says that was a gift of Allah and the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says one day I was sitting with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, who is going to lay their clothing here to sit and listen to what I have to say and Allah will grant them a memory that they will never forget what I have said. And he says, I was the first one who took my piece of cloth and I laid it down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a good memory. And he says over and above that, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu says that I was with Abu Huraira one day and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into the masjid. The two of us were seated with another man. So there were three in total. And as he came, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat with us. 
and he looked at us and, and we had stopped. We were making dua and asking Allah. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sat in our midst, we stopped. So he looked at us and he said, carry on with what you were doing. So we said, we were asking Allah and they continued asking. So Zayd ibn Thabit says, I asked Allah, I asked Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa kept saying, Ameen, Ameen. Then Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu raised his hands and he asked Allah. And he says, Oh Allah, give me what these two have asked and give me knowledge that I will never forget. Meaning a memory that when I learn something, I never forget. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ameen. And so immediately the two of them, Zayd ibn Thabit says, I immediately said, and what about us? Grant us also, Ya Allah, that which this man has asked. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, he has preceded you in this, subhanallah. Meaning he said it and the Ameen went out for him. And this was Abu Huraira. He did not forget anything. So much so that Marwan ibn al-Hakam, who was the leader at the time, he was the governor of Medina, at one stage in the life of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu towards the end, he wanted to test Abu Huraira radiallahu an. So he decided, let's call him. They called him and uh, they asked him, give us hadith. So he started reciting one after the other after the other that the Prophet sallallahu said this and he said this and he said this and he said this and so many hadith. And Marwan ibn al-Hakam had a scribe who was writing all these hadith and he wrote everything down. Then he told Abu Huraira, okay, you can go. One year later, he called Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu back and he says, Oh Abu Huraira, a year back, I called you and I asked you to give us hadith. I want you to repeat the same hadith again. And now he had his scribes listening and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu repeated the ahadith without a single blunder, not in any name and not any difference of wording either. And that's when Marwan al Hakam said, this man is the alim. He is the most knowledgeable of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Alayh, the great compiler of hadith, who has written the most correct book after the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a lot of knowledge. Al-Bukhari, Rahimahullah says, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he had taught more than 800 different people who have narrated from him or more than 800, subhanallah. So when you hear Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, if you look, Further up the chain, you will find names of more than 800 different people from amongst them, a lot of the Sahaba. So much so that the senior Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to go to him and ask him what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu an. And when they asked him that how is it that you have memorized so much, he said all of you were busy with your families and you were busy with your businesses and with all other things in terms of this world. I have no family, no business. I, I had nothing. I only used to work for a certain lady whose name was Busra binti Ghazwan radiallahu anha. And I worked for her with the condition that the only payment I get was food for the day. That's all. So I used to do some chores for her and I used to get food that, that I could actually fill my belly with. But I had no interest in anything else besides sitting and listening to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much so that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum say Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was the one who used to constantly stare at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without even blinking his eyes. He just used to stare and he used to say the most beautiful of all Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his face would eclipse the sun. That's how bright it was. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was a very pious person. He loved his mother a lot. But when he accepted Islam, he brought his mother along with him to Medina Munawwara and his mother did not like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said something, his mother would utter bad words about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one day he came crying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, what is wrong? He said, you know, I went to my mother and I called her towards Islam and the goodness of Islam and explained to her. And she started saying bad things about you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I'm asking you to make a dua for her, to pray for her so that she is guided. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there and then made a dua for her by saying, Oh Allah, guide the mother of Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He was so delighted that he rushed home to say, Hey, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made a dua for you. Oh, my beloved mother. But you know what happened when he arrived home? He noticed that 
the door was closed and he heard some water. So as he ex was excusing himself to enter his own home, his mother says, wait where you are. She had a bath. She came out with the good clothing of hers. And she says, oh, Abu Huraira, I bear witness that Allah is one and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the messenger. And he was shocked. He was so happy, delighted. He actually came out rushing back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, informing him that this is what has happened. And this was the result solely and only of the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is why so many duas and supplications that have occurred in the life of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, every single one of them that was for him was granted. Subhanallah. This was the man Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He loved his mother so much so much that later on in his life, he became a very important person. And he always used to say, you know, Allah has blessed me. I had nothing. I was an orphan. I had no wealth. I had no family. I had nothing at all. And I accepted Islam and came to Medina Munawwara with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now I'm a married man. He married after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's time later on. He says, now I have, Allah has blessed me and Allah has made me an Imam. There was a stage when he was appointed as the governor of Medina Munawwara by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. And when he was the governor, it did not change anything. He still used to go and chop his firewood and bring it on his back. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and the others of Medina Munawwara, the Tabi'een used to look at him and say, this man is our governor. Look at him going to chop his own firewood and bringing it back. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. So with his mother, it is reported that he loved his mother so much that every single time he went in or out of the house, he would go to the door of his mother's room and greet his mother. Assalamu alaikum. I greet you with the peace, the greetings of peace, O oh my mother. May Allah's peace be upon you and the blessings and mercy of his be upon you, O oh my mother. So she would say, Wa alaikum as salam, O oh my son, may Allah grant you peace as well and the mercy and blessings of Allah. Then he would say, and this was every time, several times a day this would happen. He would say, May Allah have mercy on you because you looked after me since I was a child. And so she would say, and may Allah have mercy on you because you have fulfilled my rights as an elderly parent. And this happened so many times a day. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Subhanallah, he loved his mother so much. He used to greet his mother. How many of us greet our parents? How many of us make dua for them? And how many of us as parents make dua for our own children? In this case, she was what we would term a widow. Some might say a single mother in the sense that she brought him up alone. And yet later on, look at the amount of prayer that he made for her, subhanallah, and she made for him as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be thankful, especially when it comes to the way we treat our mothers. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. What a great man. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. He was a person who used to pray the first third of the night, and then he would get up his wife to pray for the second third of the night. And then she would get him up in the last third of the night and he would pray so that in his house, there was someone praying for the entire night. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He was a man whom Marwan ibn al-Hakam tested so many times. Once Marwan ibn al-Hakam sent to him 100 dinars. And the next day Marwan ibn al-Hakam sent a message or came to see him and told him, I made a mistake. I sent you money that was supposed to go to someone else. And they found that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, it was true that he never slept with money that, that was extra that he kept. So they found he, that he told Marwan ibn al-Hakam, look, I gave that money away to poor people yesterday in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as I got it. But when I get my salary at the end of the month, then you can take from it and cut it off and you give me the rest and the balance of my salary. Subhanallah. So Marwan ibn al-Hakam said, no, I was only testing you and it's okay. You can keep that wealth and it's yours. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Mar uh, this Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr radiallahu an. He saw two men walking, looking similar. One was a bit older and one was younger. So he asked the younger one, hey, who is he to you? He said, that's my father. He says, listen, Never call your father by his first name out of respect. Number one, this was the advice of Abu Huraira to the man. Never walk in front of your father and do not sit before he is seated. Subhanallah. This means that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, although he did not have a father because he was an orphan, he is showing the value of the parents. Subhanallah. And I want to end with two stories. One is where Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu had once gone into the marketplace and he saw people there in the marketplace 
all involved in business. And he was he told them, Oh, you people, you are involved in business, but you don't know the inheritance of Muhammad وسلم, is being distributed, and you people are oblivious of it. They said, Where is it being distributed? They want it. So he said, It's in the masjid. So they rushed into the masjid, which was very nearby. This was in Medina Munawwara. And they only saw people reading Salah and some others were reading Quran and someone else was uh, teaching the other what was halal and haram and so on. So they rushed back to Abu Huraira and said, Hey, where's the inheritance you're talking about? He said, you went to the masjid. They said, yes, what did you find there? So they said, we found someone reading Quran, someone teaching it, someone re reading Salah and someone uh, engaged in teaching the others what halal and haram is. So he said, that is the inheritance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whilst you are earning this wealth for the world, that is in fact the inheritance and that will take you into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Marwan ibn al-Hakam visited him visited him at the end of his life. So he found Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu making a dua. And the dua was a beautiful prayer that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu made. He said, Oh Allah, I love to meet you. And I pray that you love to meet me too. And I hope it is soon. So Marwan ibn al-Hakam said, what a man, what a great man. As he walked out, and he had taken a few steps. He heard of the death of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He passed away in the year uh, approximately 57 Hijri at the age of about 80, uh, sorry, 78 approximately. And he is buried in Baqi'. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah and grant all of us Jannah. The next hero of ours that we are speaking about, also a great narrator of hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also a man who came from afar was Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. His name was Abdullah ibn Qais al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an. May Allah's peace be upon him as well. He was from Yemen. And as soon as he heard of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the time of Makkah, he came out to Makkah and he accepted Islam with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as soon as he could from amongst those who accepted Islam at the beginning. And he went back to Yemen, he taught his people and he came back to Medina Munawwara at the time that Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and those who had gone to Al-Habasha to Africa had come back. So some of the historians say that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu also went to Abyssinia. But the truth is he had gone back to his people in Yemen and he was teaching them Islam because he came back with approximately 50 people from Yemen and he had brought them from amongst those known as Al-Ash'ariyeen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this man was a beautiful reciter of the Quran. He recited the Quran so beautifully and he himself looked so handsome that people loved to hear his Quran. One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked into the masjid with Buraida radiallahu an. And he says, Subhanallah, we heard late at night a recitation, a beautiful recitation. So amazingly, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped and heard this man making a dua. And what was the dua? The dua was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi anni ashhadu annaka anta Allahu la ilaha illa anta. La ilaha illa ant. Alladhi la ilaha illa ant. Al ahadu samad. Alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. There was a man making dua using this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped and he says, Oh Buraida. This is the name of Allah that when it is used to call out to Allah, he responds. And when it is used to ask Allah, he gives subhanallah. So what was it? Let me quickly repeat this. He says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi anni ashhadu annaka anta Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa ant al ahad as samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Subhanallah. What a powerful way of calling out to Allah. Oh Allah, I am calling out to you, you being the one whom I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you. Subhanallah. You are the one, Allah. You are the one and only, the irresistible, the one whom there is no one similar to, the one who neither begets nor was he begotten. These are the names of Allah found in Surah Al Ikhlas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to call out to Him. When we call out to Allah, do not just say, Ya Allah, grant me this. 
Use some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call out to Allah. Find out what the names are. Use them, understand their meaning, cry to Allah and keep on repeating the dua and choose different times of the day and night, different seasons, different moments, different places. And believe me, there will be a place where your dua will be accepted, a time when your dua will be accepted and the wording that you may use that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant acceptance to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our duas. This man was so beautiful in his recitation that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an has been granted a flute from amongst the flutes that were left behind by the people of Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam. They were known as those who had beautiful voices. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu and the other companions loved his recitation so much because of how melodious it was. They used to say, O oh Abu Musa, O oh Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, read for us, remind us about Allah and remind us about meeting with Allah. And he used to recite a few verses so much so that one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same hadith of Buraida radiallahu an, where he says, we heard this man making a dua. He says the following day, we heard again a recitation of the Quran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this reciter is definitely not a person who is showing off. He's definitely not being boastful. He is calling out to Allah. He is reciting for the sake of Allah. Such a beautiful, melodious voice. And suddenly they saw Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an, and he was reading the Quran. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was listening to such a beautiful recitation. And he said, this man has been granted a flute from amongst the flutes left by the family of Dawood or the people of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. And this was this beautiful man. He had some qualities, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an. He took part in so many wars, but whenever there were Muslims fighting each other, he was the furthest away. He went away. He said, I don't take part in anything of this. This is why he was known as the man who tried so hard to bring together Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. And it is known that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an was one of those who tried so hard to, to make them avoid this conflict that they had. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and use us also to solve people's matters and not to make us from those who are unruly or those who create problems and disasters. This man, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an, something very interesting about him, and I will end with this inshallah, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent him with Mu'adh ibn Jabal again to Yemen. So he was sent back to his people or to the area close to where he came from once again by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do you know what happened? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a powerful statement to the two of them as he as they were departing. Who were the two? Abdullah ibn Qais radiallahu an, whose name was Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an, and Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when you go there, Bashira wa la tunafira, wa yassira wa la tu'assira. Amazing words. He says, you're going to call people to Islam. Give them good news. Do not scare them away. Do not give them harsh news. Meaning give them good news. Tell them good things. Speak about good matters. Don't make them so fearful that they run away. Bashira wala tunafira. Give glad tidings. Don't chase people away. And secondly, yassira wala tu'assira. Make things easy for people. Do not make them difficult. And this is where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was known that whenever there was something to be done and there was more than one way of doing it, he always chose the easier way to do it for as long as it was not something sinful. And this is what we have been taught. So imagine whenever we are calling people towards Allah, use good words, use encouragement. Do not doom them in a way that they run away from the deen thinking as it is, I'm going to hell. So what's the point of me being good anyway? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to call people with goodness to the, towards the deen and towards this beautiful religion. This was Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. We just mentioned a few of the stories that happened in his life. And he was from amongst those, subhanallah, who passed away. He passed away in the year 42 Hijri, but there is a dispute as to when exactly he passed away and whether he passed away in, in uh, Kufa or in Makkah. 
So there is a dispute or there is difference of opinion as to exactly where he passed away and when he passed away. But he was one of those senior companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who did not take part in the disputes amongst the Muslimin in a negative way. If anything, he tried to solve matters. When he heard two people were arguing or fighting, he would go to them and tell them to stop arguing and fighting because the loss would be for us as an ummah, not for just the two of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he grant us the ability to resolve our matters. This is a beautiful month of Ramadan. I call on us all. If we have matters outstanding in our families, amongst us as brothers and sisters, sort them out, even if it means to apologize when you are not wrong. Sometimes that would sort the matter out and it would make us earn paradise because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who resolve matters as we have learned from all these days that we have been speaking about the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Bless us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.